this is what's going on. This wonder of art and nature coming together and community coming together and meeting new friends and finding new places. I just moved to Ipswich and met my new best, best friend, Carrie Bates, who is the director of the recreation and culture department of Ipswich. And she's the one behind all the magic in that town during this time of year. And the fish you see were made by the 3D students in collaboration with Carrie. I'm just going to hand it over to her. Yes. So it is a delight, excuse the pun, to be here with you all on this beautiful campus on this autumn day in this chapel. And to hear that song, Fire of Commitment, my heart was soaring to heaven. Um, so Illumination, just to give you a little background, has uh, been going on in Ipswich for, this is the 12th year. And um, it, started, it started out with bonfires. We were floating bonfires on the Ipswich River. And around that, in the autumn, so in the summertime, Ipswich is a busy place. We meet at Crane's Castle for concerts. We're off in boats on beaches at Appleton Farms in, in beautiful open spaces. And then in the autumn, people start sort of drifting back to routines, school, athletics, work. Um, so we wanted to have an event where we gathered once again by the communal fireside. And um, so we started floating bonfires. And every year in autumn, usually in October, uh, we float the bonfires. And it's a stone soup party. Around that, artists come musicians, poets, dancers, installation artists, and we celebrate. So this year I met Lynn, who was having a show at the Hall Haskell House Gallery, and we became fast friends. And I w we t went to the space, and I started waving my arms around and imagining together. Um, Lynn jumped right in, and it was, it was a collaboration that brought me, bridged us, you know, to here to the Rook School and the students in the 3D class. And it's just so satisfying and gratifying to see these creations hanging here in the chapel and to have all of you gathered together. So, um, beautiful. Yes. So, we started. But the end didn't come till later. So this is actually the ending from whence we came. It became an illumination of creation story, evolved from the original uh, plan of just putting up some fun fish with lights in them and making a fun event to a deeper story. And here's the site, though, I want to show you. So with uh, the art students, we had to learn about site-specific art installations. Artists who do this kind of work need to see the site, go to it, feel it, talk with the people who are facilitating and seeing what their needs are, and then dream. And so they have to consider what the situation is, what the, con you know, the conditions are, and this is what we came up with, that the Ipswich River is the water source and the heart of the community. So that was our beginning. So this is the downtown area, or I should say the river walk area. There's a, if you've ever been, it's beautiful. There's the river, it's just a rushing waterfall and a bridge that, that crosses over. And here are some little uh, bays of lights and the fencing. Yeah. So these are stark photographs in the brilliance of daylight. And part of the magic of illumination is that it happens as the days become shorter and the nights are longer. And this idea of gathering by the community fireside 
is about storytelling and imagining what's possible. And um, so it's, it was very fun this year when Lynn and the 3D art class took us under the water and into the fantastic imaginal realm of, it was just so fantastic. Mm -hmm. The fish, um, you know, in that dark light, the fish were so bright, people's eyes dilated to take it all in. Yeah, but even still, as the installation was being put together, people in the daylight were getting excited. And here are the students preparing the first part of the installation, which is, I don't know how long uh, the <laughs> fabric this is, but it was long, and we had to split it in half. Whoops, sorry, backwards. So then it begins. We start feeding it through the river, through the um, fencing, including lights, and there is what ended up being. And if you can see in the distance, there's the bridge, uh, the Choke Bridge, which is a very famous bridge, one of the only double arched. It's the longest still standing double arch bridge. In the country. So we chose the theme of school, of, of fish, as, as this idea of the school and the community, just for as you are. And then also within the Ipswich town is based in the river and the fish. So before we, sh I showed them all the pictures of the site and we discussed it and then they began making their big giant fish out of chicken wire and they looked pretty nondescript at the time but it was hard work and then they started to emerge and become what they ended up being. As in any process, it takes time. And sometimes you don't know what the end is gonna be, which is kind of exciting and also terrifying. <laughs> so then the installation is starting in the public, in the spot, and people are starting to see and help. They're like, oh, can I help you? It was wonderful. And we decided that the fish needed to be jumping out of the water. So we developed this arc system with poles and things that Carrie has <laughs> and started making them. But again, people were helping, bringing things because it's a lot of physical work. And then finally when they were up, even in the day, they were magical. But then the night comes and the mermaid shows up. At the end of all the installation, I realized I had a mermaid actually not a real one, but real to me. And I brought her. And I put her in this corner and suddenly this story appeared. Because, you know, we all originated from water, didn't we? That's where all life begins. And over time and at the hands of humans, the pristine waters of the earth were becoming so polluted that the waters, the land, the creatures, and the plants began to die. Man's careless disregard for this limit, the limited resource had caused a crisis. Having a mysterious connection with the humans, the mermaids of the sea convened to discuss how to best approach the humans. The kindest mermaid of the ocean, with the sweetest voice, was chosen to bravely come to land in hopes of convincing the humans to save the waters and the creatures and land from destruction. She can be seen here at the river's edge, gazing longingly into the water, wishing to return to a healthy home once her story has been shared with the humans. She came bearing gifts. What is my gift? <gasps> Little pearls of wisdom from the sea. And <laughs> she has brought along with her all of her friends, all the other sea creatures to help illuminate the situation. And so 
from this point, she was passing out all these little pearls of wisdom and the fish are jumping out of the water in hopes of presenting their ethereal plea for action. Together they hope to shed the light upon the grave conditions of the earth's waters and remind us humans of our responsibility and our origin. So by receiving this gift, we have accepted the role of a water steward, one who will protect the earth's most precious resource and the source of all life and water. And I believe that another source of our life is our creativity, that if we didn't have it, we would be nothing. We would just be bodies walking along the earth. And so by combining this idea of the source of energy, the source of life with the river, and the source of our own creativity, we get to see. So by bringing music and dance and people together, we get to see what is possible. So these are just some of the images from the evenings. As you saw them in the daylight, now they come to life. So as I look at these pictures of the night and my pupils relax, and um, there's a thing that's little known or talked about where when our pupils dilate, people fall into each other. This is why people have been falling in love by candlelight for forever. And uh, the starkness of the bright day is for making hay and dealing with the details of the day. But at night, when we gather by the fireside, it's for storytelling and for imagining things that are not yet realized. And so to have these creative stewards from the sea to come and grace us both in Ipswich and here on your campus is, is a real privilege and treat. So I, I'm grateful to the 3D students and to Lynn and to your whole community. So I just would like to have the 3D students rise and show themselves. <laughs> And here's something that a passerby said when someone else was just speaking to them and they decided to, whoops, they decided to um, tape it. I, I love how they're, they're so creative and, and they, they use so many different materials and it really looks like, it looks like, you know, they didn't set out to say, okay, I need this size fabric or that size fabric. Yeah. They just picked up, you know, whatever was handy. And made beautiful art with it, and I just, I love it. You love it. I love it. There's one thing that, for the first time, oh my gosh, I'm blown away. So, the joy that just kept going from the joy that came from within was really powerful, and it is powerful. So, here's the question. Maybe some of you noticed outside the, the chapel. The question is, did the humans listen to the mermaid? Did she return to her home in the waters? Well, sadly, someone decided, yeah. So maybe it does appear funny, but if you consider the, the point of this whole installation, it's sad. Mm -hmm. And it is sad for all of us, not just for the mermaid. And it's even sad for the person who decided to throw her over mm -hmm. because there's something missing from them. Mm -hmm. And so we need 
to be stewards of all that is precious. Whatever you hold dear, use, it, use your light to, to nurture it. And remember from whence you came. To use that light to illuminate yourself, each other, and our community, and our planet.